The running back class in 2012 had some big names, Alabama's Trent Richardson, Boise State's Doug Martin, and Oregon's LaMichael James. However, the results from this class as a whole fell flat. Richardson was a huge bust. Doug Martin had two great seasons, but injuries held him back. First rounder David Wilson only started six total games. LaMichael James never started a game. And overall, outside of Lamar Miller, rounds two through five produced a lackluster group of running backs. Then we get to the sixth round, and that's where everything changed. The 173rd overall pick was Alfred Morris. He was the 14th running back drafted in 2012 and entered camp with three veterans in front of him. The odds of him getting cut before the regular season were higher than him earning the starting role. And yet, that season, Alfred Morris shocked the NFL, finishing second only to Adrian Peterson in rushing yards. And on to Alfred Morris. First guy misses, here he comes. Second guy misses, Alfred Morris. Redskin touchdown. So, where did this dude come from? How was he so good? And then after the initial success, what happened to his career? We will get into all of that, but first, a word from today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Football season is back, and let me explain how SeatGeek, a longtime partner on this channel, works. They gather tickets from all across the web and put them into one area, making buying simple. They have everything from football, baseball, basketball, concerts, festivals, or more. And with football season back, why not go to one of your local college or NFL games? The atmosphere is unlike any other. Seagy rates every ticket from zero to 10 to make sure that you're getting a good deal, with green meaning good and red meaning bad. And for first time buyers, use code KTO at checkout for $20 off your first purchase. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. Now, before we can get the perspective of this dude's rise in 2012, we gotta go back a few years. Back in 2008, Alfred Morris wasn't highly recruited coming out of high school, and he committed to Florida Atlantic, a school that most of us only know because of picking one of the worst teams to build a dynasty with back in the NCAA football days, or because Ole Miss coach Lane Kiffin randomly coached there for a few years. Either way, they aren't a huge school. But despite this, Alfred made a name for himself among NFL scouting circles. Over the course of his time there, Alfred was the Owls' workhorse back, and you can see from his highlight reel just how much power and trucking ability he possessed. The dude ran like a freight train, and because he's only 5'9", his low center of gravity benefited him greatly. He was hard to bring down, had tremendous balance even after contact, and he is the epitome of what every running backs coach would say. Always keep your feet moving. Alfred also had excellent vision and was a quick decision maker. But despite his skills, there were looming questions to the point where many scouts overlooked him entirely. First of all, he played in the Sun Belt. I mean, it's Southern football, but they ain't the SEC. Most of them dudes ain't playing on Sundays. Then when it came to his athletic ability, Alfred lacked open field speed and didn't appear overly explosive. After receiving a combine invite in 2012, this issue was put to paper as he dropped a 4.67 40-yard dash. This was one of the slowest times among running backs that year. On top of that, he wasn't the size you'd hope for in a power back with a near 4740. He weighed in at 219 pounds at the combine. Pro Football Weekly's YouTube channel back in 2012 did a draft profile on Alfred, and the channel mentioned that he may have to change to fullback and perhaps put on some weight if he were going to make it in the NFL. Most sources had him projected as a late round pick to even undrafted by some. Well, the 2012 draft came, and after taking big ticket RG3, Washington quietly selected Alfred Morris in the sixth round. Going into camp, he initially came into a position battle with three other backs, Roy Hilu Jr., Evan Royster, and Tim Hightower. There were a handful of ways that this could play out, but the most likely route was that all these guys would split carries in the RPO offense led by offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan and QB RG3. But two things went down during camp. The first thing was that Royster and Hilu Jr. both had injury issues, causing them to miss preseason games. And the second thing, this allowed Alfred Morris the chance to start in preseason game three, where 
he put on a show. And after an overall impressive camp, he had done enough to impress the coaching staff. And the day before the season opener, Alfred was officially named the starting running back. So how did his debut go? Didn't use it to push away, create separation. On first and goal, this is Morris, and he dumped it in for the touchdown. Alfred Morris. Morris is in for his second touchdown today. For most outsiders, we remember the 2012 Redskins for that amazing season put together by RG3. But by his side, Alfred Morris played equally as impressive, and he had multiple huge performances as a rookie. He had the amazing debut, six games where he went over 100 yards, a 200-yard, three-touchdown finale versus Dallas, the second most rushing yards and touchdowns in the entire NFL, and lastly, he made the All-Pro second team. To call this a great rookie season is a massive understatement. Considering sixth and seventh round picks have a higher chance of getting cut as opposed to starting, this is all time legendary. Some will point to his 2012 success as being inflated as a direct result of opposing teams being worried about stopping RG3, and this allowed for bigger running lanes for Alfred. To an extent, this is true. They ran a unique offense the NFL wasn't fully prepared for yet. And in the midst of defenses trying to adjust, Washington kept beating them down with this effective rookie duo and the read option. But this wasn't the main reason to Alfred's success, and my next few points will help illustrate this. The following year, for pretty much everybody in Washington, was a forgettable one. The Redskins went from surprise playoff contenders in 2012 to one of the worst teams in the NFL, and their offensive schemes that had worked so well the year before had fallen completely apart. And yet, Alfred played at a Pro Bowl level. In fact, he didn't miss a single game just like in 2012, and he finished fourth in the league in rushing yards. Then 2014, with the team still falling apart, he managed to make another Pro Bowl, again playing in every game, and reached his third consecutive 1,000-yard season. Clearly, Alfred's lack of speed hadn't held him back from doing what he did best putting his shoulder down, keeping his legs pumping, and fighting for every last yard. And perhaps his greatest trait of all, Alfred was always available. He had at least 200 carries in each of his four seasons in Washington and never missed a single game. He's every coach's dream type of back. The best part about it is that it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Alfred is as down to earth as it gets. Even after going pro, he continued to drive his 91 Mazda that he got for $2 to help remind him of where he came from. And before home games, he would arrive early to go and visit his stadium fam. This was a group of workers in a certain section at Washington's home games that he would say hi to and chat with before the game started. Now, despite this feel-good story and all the surprising success Alfred Morris had to this point, his days as a starting NFL running back ended rather quickly. Following 2014, he would never reach another 1,000-yard season, and he would be out of Washington after 2015. Then, he only went on to start six more games in his entire career. So, what happened? Well, 2015 was a big change in Washington. The Jay Gruden era was now well underway with a Kirk Cousins-led West Coast pass attack as opposed to the multiple scheme RPO-based rush offense with RG3 that had been established by the Shanahans in 2012. Washington also drafted Matt Jones, who initially split carries with Alfred, but he was really meant to be his replacement. As some say, the NFL stands for not for long, and running backs are often hit the hardest by this. Even if you're a decent back, bringing in a drafted replacement before your rookie contract is up is often the most cap-friendly move, as opposed to offering a second contract. It sucks, but it's just how the business operates. When he became a free agent in 2015, Washington didn't really pursue re-signing Alfred. In fact, there wasn't a huge market for one of the game's leading rushers over the last four years. This bothered Alfred, and he even said in an interview, quote, the free agency process was very insulting. Then, who else but the Cowboys, the team that had been torched by Alfred Morris many times, swooped in and signed him to a two-year deal. This was a move that Dallas fans were happy about at the time, 
Alfred was a veteran that could come in and split carries with rookie running back Ezekiel Elliott. But the same type of thing that happened for Alfred four years prior took place in Dallas. The rookie Zeke took most of the workload on his way to a huge breakout season. And Alfred didn't start a single game and averaged just less than five carries a contest. The rest of his career would play out in journeyman style, bouncing around a few different teams before his retirement following the 2020 season. The reality of the NFL is harsh. A guy like Alfred Morris can go from an effective starting running back to obscurity in the blink of an eye. With his performance dropping over the years and new fresh talent entering the league on a yearly basis, this pretty much meant that his days were numbered. Most of the dudes in the NFL by their late 20s are just fighting to stay on rosters, even some that have had a few years of Pro Bowl level success. Now, I don't think that the fall off should take away from what Alfred Morris was able to do. He entered the NFL a nobody. He was a sixth round pick and the 14th running back selected in the draft. And among that 2012 class, he is ranked number one in attempts, yards, and touchdowns. He also may be the first NFL player to have more horsepower than the car he drives. But anyways, to end this video, I wanna tell my favorite story that I came across while researching. In 2016, which was Alfred's first season in Dallas and just barely being removed from playing in Washington, he had his official return to play against the team that had drafted him in week two. Alfred, being the guy he is, took the early bus to the stadium to go and see his old friends. They all got to catch up and laughed about Alfred now playing for their rival. They even asked one of the dudes this question. So if he scores the game winning touchdown, what are your feelings then? Upset that we lose, but happy for him. That would be pretty epic if that happened, but it was highly unlikely since Alfred was the second stringer to Zeke. So we could pretty much rule out that a game winning touchdown by a backup running back was going to happen, right? Here, remember, Prescott used his legs and ran in from six yards out. Second down and two. Alfred Morris gets it. Morris, touchdown! 